Welcome to Tuckview Security Products. Today we're going to do a little overview on the different lock types that we have for the products that we have available for you. And then we're going to do a little deep dive and show you some examples on what kind of products they go into and also some maintenance and installation issues that you may come across as you're uh, upgrading your locks or changing your locks out or even just dealing with them for the first time uh, after you receive your product. So we've got four different lock types available. Our original lock type we have is this, it's part 102. This is our push button lock. It's uh, the original that goes in all of our universal consoles. It's literally a push button lock with our patented anti-twist sleeve. So we'll go over that a little bit later. We have our cam lock, this is our part 101. This is in a majority of our parts now. When you see our underseat lock boxes, our console safes, this is usually what they come with. Our upgrade lock for that is our three digit combo lock. This goes it is a replacement for the cam lock. So like these are not interchangeable, the push button and the 082, but our cam lock and the 082 are. That's a common misconception as people order something with a push button lock and they want a combo lock and that just doesn't work together. That's our third lock. Our fourth and rarest lock is this big 10 button lock. This usually works with one of our push button locks and we'll show an example of that. Um, this one will not substitute out for these others, right? So there's different locking mechanisms that we have in each product type. This usually goes in our large tactical security drawers or a lot of our portable uh, safes that we have. So we'll go over that and we'll bring out some product on the drill down as we look at each lock in its native environment installed on product and go over some of the different intricacies with each lock in just a minute. All right, welcome to the breakdown on part 102, our push button uh, lock for Tuffy security products. This is one of the original lock systems that we put in place. It's on all of our universal consoles. Um, and this is it sticking out at the top of this product right here. Uh, it has our anti-twist right here. So you can grab it with a wrench and actually spin it and not actually twist it out of the housing. Um, this is not a suitable lock replacement for our 101 cam lock. You can see the difference is pretty substantial. This isn't nearly as high. It doesn't have the anti-twist and this one doesn't push. It only turns 90 degrees, whereas this one is actually a push button. Okay, that's a big difference between those two locking mechanisms and why they are not interchangeable. They have a completely different locking mechanism. This one slides into place through our pry guard. This one is actually a push button and a locking mechanism. So unlike the cam lock I just put down there, this part 102, this push button lock actually can latch closed without being locked. Whereas the other one is only in an open um, in a locked position. Uh, this one, a lot of people, when they get the product, they turn the key trying to get it open, but it doesn't turn like a cam lock. You literally have to push it, whether it's locked or unlocked in order to get it open. That's because we have a much more robust locking system up in here and it engages through this large striker down here instead of going through a pry guard mechanism. So those are big differences between the two. Uh, really, really solid locking mechanism, especially if you're gonna use it on these universal consoles. Great for resto mods or upgrading your existing console on almost any vehicle. Um, some big things with this one, again, is uh, lubrication. Um, it's good every three to six months to use some silicone spray, get that in here on the top past the little dust screen and also to lubricate the components within the inside of this mechanism here. If you have an issue with the lock and you have to get it out, you're going to have to remove this housing in order to access the locking components inside. That's really important. Uh, don't try and, and do it without it. Um, so that's kind of the breakdown on our 102 push button lock. Uh, remember, you can latch it without locking it, uh, and then use the key to actually lock it. This will also go in combination with our uh, 10 button combination locks, and we'll go over that on a separate video and look at that with another product uh, when they're associated together and actually installed at the factory uh, for, for another configuration using this lock mechanism. All right, so now we're gonna talk about our part number 101, our cam lock. It's our standard lock on most of our products. Um, a couple little tips that we've got here is we want to talk about lubrication and maintenance, especially when you run these in our hood locks. So you guys who are buying our hood locks, 
pay special attention. Interior products, not so much, but it's still worth doing, okay? Uh, we prefer to use a silicone spray on all of our locks, but especially on these and especially on the hood locks because they're exposed to the weather, even if you get a dust cover on the front. Uh, which doesn't come with it, but we sell them separately and it's important to do that. But silicone spray isn't like WD-40 or other lubricants. It doesn't draw in uh, dust and dirt and grit. So it's really important to use that when you're lubricating these locks. It needs to be done probably every three to six months. So what ends up happening is the key ends up binding in there and then you can't actually get it out or it'll break off and then that's a whole lot of trouble. Um, the, the best way to do it is to either spray the silicone spray directly on the key and then insert the key in and out a few times just to kind of run it in, or you can actually pull this mechanism open. There's actually a little dust shield on if you don't have the folding dust cover uh, aftermarket accessory, um, and then just spray it directly into the lock housing. So that's really important just from a maintenance operation. These only turn 90 degrees. Let's see if I can find the right keys here. Um, that's it. So, you know, you're not going to do a 180 or anything else when you're, when you're running these lock mechanisms. So let's look at that in practice. This is on our 027. This is our underhood. It's kind of a universal box. It's a little trapezoidal shape, but it basically was designed to go under the hood and a Jeep. So in that mechanism, you can see it's only a two position mechanism. It goes through our pry guard system. Pretty simple lock application, but it's important. Again, this isn't going to have the dust cover on there, if you can see that right there. Again, you're gonna to wanna to spray that into that lock mechanism just to keep those nice and lubricated. And just kind of run the key in and out just to kind of keep it nice and, and greased up. So we have a couple of different locks in the cam lock configuration. This other one is on this RAM. This is our console safe. Um, we'll go into another video on why it's not fully sighted. We have our reasons for that after 30 years of development and customer feedback, but we'll do that in another video. Um, comment and, uh, down below if you want to want to see a little bit more explanation about that and our more heavy duty consoles. But in this instance, you can see here, there's actually a black housing on the cam lock. This prevents it from actually, um, removing the key in the unlocked position because in this instance there's actually a tray in the ram console that slides back and forth so if you have a ram you know exactly what i'm talking about if you don't it's irrelevant but we use this in a couple of different applications one in this one so that the key doesn't get snapped off in the lock and we also use it as a safety mechanism on our driver side under seat drawers it's the same cam lock uh, these are more difficult. We don't usually stock as many of these because they're built in on a limited number of SKUs. So you'll want to call customer service. You're not going to want to get the silver-sided cam lock, which is our standard, if you have one of these because um, it won't really work the same and you'll risk either snapping your key off or it not being safe under the driver's side. Um, so those are the different positions for that. Um, we also have an older barrel lock cam lock, which we don't sell anymore. Um, it's very common. You can see this on like a candy machine, soda machine, stuff like that. It actually has a round uh, thing in the center. It's actually really easy. Uh, opportunistic thieves can just come in with a punch and just hammer the core of it out, which is why we stopped using the barrel locks. So if you have those old in, uh, barrel locks in your Tuffy products, give us a call. We have an upgrade and we can take this cam lock and we'll send you a kit and you can actually remove it and substitute out the old barrel lock. Um, obviously, if you still have it and it's many, many years ago, it's obviously been doing its job, but it is more susceptible to theft than our standard uh, double bitted keys. If you notice, these aren't like your standard house key. They don't have uh, one solid side, so they're not susceptible to a knock key or other ways of, uh, you know, overriding and picking the lock. Uh, just a lot more robust key system. And we actually have replacement cam locks uh, on the ready for those where we don't carry barrel lock keys anymore, so you can't get those. So we're gonna talk about the 082 combination lock. This is our three digit combination lock. It's a common upgrade on most of our console safes and our under seat lock boxes. It also comes standard on products like this. This is our 303 large portable safe. It has a different cam arm. You can see this is what comes in our console safe. That cam arm, this one is a different one. So they're all custom made for each product. Just something to note.
One thing we're gonna talk about with the 082 that's a common issue is the reset pin below the combination lock. That's how you actually set your combination. And a lot of people, when they install it, they'll turn this barrel lock sideways and it occludes access to the pin mechanism below the three digit lock. So that's something to be very careful of when you're working the lock. Um, basic installation, you're gonna have to remove the cam arm in order to do the, the upgrade. So if you're removing one of our cam locks, standard 101, you're gonna have to remove this from the back of the lock. So when you get into this mechanism, it's really important. It's pretty easy, you just unscrew it, right? It's got a little lock washer right there, you can see, a main washer. And then when you pull this cam arm off, you really need to hold, this whole silver mechanism will pop out, which is a mess and you don't want that to happen. So we really want to hold that down. It's not bad, that comes off and it's really important, there's this washer on here and it's got a 90 degree turn. So when the lock actually turns, that needs to stay in the same orientation. So you need to pay attention to that. Maybe even take a picture of it with your phone when you're actually pulling the 101 out in order to do the upgrade so that you know the orientation the cam arm needs to be in for it to be locked in unlocked position. It needs to be in the unlocked position when you put that in. All right, so that's a common scenario. If that's confusing, give John or Laura a call on our customer service line. They'll totally take care of you and walk you through. Setting the combination lock. Again, push that set pin. If you installed it correctly and you don't see the set pin, it's because this is actually turned and that's occluded and you can't get into it, okay? The pros to this is you don't have keys to lose, right? You don't have to worry about it. You can always access it as long as you remember the combination. The big downside to these is there is no master override. And we've had more than one customer call in and go, I forgot my combination, how do I get into it? you can't, right? Once you set that, it's analog. So as much as we've looked at doing higher end RFID or key fob or anything electric, we like running analog because it doesn't run out of batteries and it doesn't break, but it also, there's no way to get in this. We can always send you a new key for a keyed lock. That's the benefit of having a keyed lock in there is you can use a key, you can give us a call, we can key match it. So you'll be able to see the key code on the front of the lock. Right, it's also on your key, it's etched in there, so you just send that to us, security verification, we can send you a key. With one of these, we're gonna, you're gonna have to call customer service and they're gonna tell you how to get into it, which isn't a fun process. So remember your code and make sure that you test it before you actually lock your product and shut everything down. Really good lock though, super solid. We really like it, we recommend it all the time, especially as an upgrade, especially if you don't wanna carry extra keys. Um, that's about it for the 082 three digit combination lock. All right, so we're gonna discuss our part 089, our 10 digit combination lock. This is a pretty typical configuration. It usually works in conjunction with our part 102 push button lock on things like this portable tactical lock box and also our large um, tactical drawers and our truck bed drawers. Uh, that's where we typically use those in order to have keyless entry. Uh, you'll typically see it installed in this manner behind one of our large handles. And we're gonna open it up and take a look inside uh, and how we actually address the changing of the combination. As you can see, we always have this uh, plate over the, all of the locking mechanism on the interior. So you can usually get through the small window in order to adjust that. Technically you buy it on the website, but it's not gonna go in your typical console safe or in one of our underseat lock boxes. It's not a suitable change out for that. So just so you're aware that it really has to be predetermined and pre-drilled at the factory to work in conjunction with our one or two push button lock. So it's actually an, an override for that mechanism that we've engineered inside to work in conjunction. So don't expect to change this out for the three digit combination lock or the 101 cam lock, which I, that's this one right here. That's the standard that's on most of our products, especially the console safes and the under seat lock boxes. Well, after you set your code, it'll come from the factory with like one, two, three, four is usually what we set. Uh, so you can change that by going on the backside and turning those arrows front to back. And so it actually comes with a device that you can pull out and then use that in order to adjust these arrows on the back of the lock mechanism. 
All right. Before you actually enter your code, you always want to clear it out because anybody who leans on this and these buttons get pressed on the lock when it's actually installed, it'll basically set that into the code system and then it won't work. So step one before you even try and open it using the code is always to clear it out using the clear button, then go ahead and press in your code. Um, there's no particular order that they have to go in. Uh, they just need to be only the ones that are actually set to open will, will open. It's all analog, it's all tried and tested, it works really, really well. Uh, again, we want to use silicon spray in order to lubricate the 102 mechanism and the mechanism inside as far as the latching mechanism and all the components in here. You're going to want to spray those with silicon spray every three to six months uh, just to keep them in really good working order, especially the area with the key override uh, with the 102 push button lock. If you have any other questions, you can always call our customer service. They're always there to help uh, or leave them down in the comments and we'll get back to you on those as soon as we are available. Thanks for making it at the end of our overview of the four different lock types that we have for Tuffy security products. If you have any unanswered questions, leave them down in the comments below or give our customer service people a call. If you liked it and it helped you out, hit the like button. You know, smash that thing. We could really use the help. Uh, subscribe if you want to, but we are a manufacturer, so we don't monetize. It's not really that important, but you know, YouTube always likes that kind of thing. So all hail to the YouTube gods. All right, thanks.